Welcome to WTDC 17 here in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Karma Penjo, who is the Secretary for the Ministry of Information and Communications for Bhutan. Thank you very much for being with us in the studio today. Good evening. Thank you for having me here today. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about the overall impact of ICTs. How has it affected your country's socioeconomic development? Well, since the introduction of uh, ICTs, uh, ICT introduction has had a tremendous positive impact on the socio-economic development of Bhutan. Uh, for example, it has uh, really helped a kingdom uh, like Bhutan, which is very mountainous, rugged terrain, very uh, harsh geographic conditions. It has helped the people communicate with each other because we don't really have a very wide road network. It's very difficult in the mountains. But through telecommunications, it has uh, been able to bridge the communication gap between the government and the citizens, and as well as between the citizens. And it has also helped connect a very small landlocked country like Bhutan with the outside world. And what would you say are the major challenges or obstacles that Bhutan faces in the use of ICTs and the attainment of sustainable development? Uh, one challenge that the government continues to face, despite having invested so much with the help of our development partners uh, in building up the basic infrastructure is the issue of uh, having access to affordable connectivity. So I think this is, uh, will continue to remain a challenge. And uh, Bhutan being an LDC, and that too, a landlocked LDC. So uh, the issue of uh, getting good, reliable, adequate bandwidth is very expensive. Uh, so I think this, con this will continue to be a challenge in order to take advantage uh, and harness the full impact of all the mobile apps and the databases and the e-government services that the government ha uh, has and is implementing. Now, you're a long way from home here. Uh, you've obviously taken the time to be here. I just wanted to find out what sort of the advantages of the cooperation with ITU? Well, Bhutan became a member of ITU on 15 September 1988. And a year later, we received the first uh, technical assistance uh, where the ITU, along uh, with the UNDP, uh, assisted uh, the Royal Government of Bhutan in drafting its National Telecommunications Development Master Plan, which was subsequently funded and implemented through a Japanese uh, project. Uh, since then, uh, I think we have had a numerous assistance uh, from ITU. It, they have helped us uh, all the way from having established uh, piloting community centers and then in digital broadcasting, They've helped us uh, fine-tune our uh, national broadband master plan. And very recently, they're also giving us technical advisory in developing a consumer framework for e-commerce. And also currently, ITU and APNIC is helping uh, the royal government in uh, uh, IPv6 migration uh, efforts also. Then the digital migration plan uh, for broadcasting, which is the ITU mandate, I think, by 2020. Uh, there too, we, uh, the ITU has assisted us in uh, coming up earlier, a few years ago, uh, with the roadmap, which uh, has recently been approved, and we have a roadmap uh, to move towards for digital broadcasting. Looking towards the end of this conference, what do you hope will be achieved from everybody getting together here for this WTDC? Well, I hope uh, that uh, the special attention and, uh, uh, is given to least developed landlocked countries because I think countries like Bhutan and then other landlocked countries who are members of the ITU, uh, we, this is a very big uh, challenge in terms of having affordable and reliable uh, uh, international gateways because uh, even if you have the domestic infrastructure but without the international bandwidth that is so essential to utilize uh, the ICT uh, advantages that, that it offers, I think uh, uh, we, it will constrain all the efforts of both the development partners and the uh, respective uh, country governments. So I hope that there would be uh, member countries and development organizations will look into this issue uh, uh, with uh, renewed uh, emphasis because uh, as we move towards achieving the SDGs, uh, I think uh, ICT has a, a, a tremendous role to play uh, directly with some of the 17 indicators. And I would say in my own opinion that uh, it impinges on all the 17 indicators in one way or the other, 
and ICTs will definitely have a very defining role in how national governments, uh, how soon and what's the depth of the coverage of the achievement of the SDGs. So therefore, I hope that, uh, uh, especially for resource constrained landlocked countries, that uh, we continue to receive uh, ITU support, especially for participation in, uh, in fora as this, and more importantly, in the technical advisory sessions where the younger professionals from uh, national governments are up to date with the changes that are taking place, with changes within ITU, so that we are able to harness the full uh, opportunities that uh, uh, ITU and the ICT offers uh, national governments. Well, let me thank you once again for being with us in the studio and wish you the very best of luck in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.